Boeing and Airbus have enjoyed dominance in the large commercial aircraft arena for decades. Other manufacturers have been acquired or moved aside as the duopoly has gathered strength. But that may change in the coming years, with new aircraft being developed in China and Russia. State-backed manufacturers in each of the two countries are developing narrow-body alternatives to the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 families. Interestingly, they are even coming together to jointly develop a wide-body competitor. So far, these aircraft are only proving popular in Russia and China. However, these are sizable markets, and perhaps once the models are proven and established, other countries will pay more attention. China took a big step forward in the aircraft manufacturing business in 2008 with the formation of COMAC, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China. This state-owned company brought together several smaller manufacturing and aeronautical companies across China with a mission to manufacture large civilian jet aircraft. The first aircraft developed by COMAC was the ARJ-21. This is a smaller regional jet that has a capacity of around 90 in a single-class configuration. The aircraft first flew in 2008 but did not enter service until 2016 with launch customer Chengdu Airlines. It's powered with two rear-mounted General Electric CF-34 engines. So far, only one variant has been delivered, the ARJ-21-700. But there is also a larger ARJ-21-900 variant planned. This will stretch the fuselage by around 3 meters and increase passenger capacity from 90 to 105, again in a single-class configuration. With its smaller size, the ARJ-21 is very much in the same market as the A220, formerly Bombardier C-Series, and Embraer aircraft such as the E-190. The ARJ-21 is designed for the route operated by domestic airlines, and that doesn't necessarily match what large international carriers may want. The ARJ-21 is priced competitively, however, having a list price of $38 million, compared with around $60 million for the E-190-E2. It also has a wider cabin, making for a more comfortable ride, depending of course on the chosen configuration. According to Comac, as of September 2020, 616 orders have been placed for the ARJ-21 from 23 customers. Most orders have been from Chinese airlines. These started with many of the smaller regional airlines in China. In June 2020, the three largest Chinese airlines all took delivery of their first ARJ-21 aircraft together. Air China, China Eastern and China Southern announced simultaneous orders for 35 ARJ-21 jets on August 30th, and each will take three aircraft by the end of 2020. China Southern and Air China will incorporate the aircraft into their fleets, operating domestic flights and China Eastern has set up a new subsidiary, OTT Airlines, which will exclusively operate the ARG-21 and the larger C919. Not all orders and customers are certain, though. One of the largest orders so far has been to a Hong Kong-based leasing company. According to the South China Morning Post, it plans to lease 60 ARJ-21 aircraft to an Indonesian airline, operating an all-ARJ-21 fleet. If this goes ahead, it would undoubtedly be a boost for the aircraft's international presence and reputation. Expanding to other international markets will be a challenge, but may happen later. The ARJ-21 is certified by the European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, but not the United States Federal Aviation Administration. Africa and Southeast Asia are the most likely target markets. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. COMAC launched a narrow-body program in 2008 and started the development of the C919 in 2011. This was designed to take on Boeing and Airbus with specifications similar to the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320. The aircraft first flew in 2015 but has not yet been delivered to airlines. Six test aircraft have been built and test flights are well underway. The first delivery is expected in 2021, with China Eastern Airlines lined up as the launch customer. The C919, as of 2020, is running around five years behind schedule as there have been several technical problems emerging from its test flights. Most serious have been delays with the aircraft's engines. COMAC has been slow to communicate the correct details for these with preferred suppliers General Electric and Safran. 
and in early 2020, the US government considered blocking the deal and preventing General Electric from supplying engines. This was resolved in April 2020, and the C919 will use GE LEAP 1C engines. The C919 will offer a typical capacity of 168 in a single-class configuration, but with a maximum limit of 190, with a range of 4,075 kilometers. There will be an extended range version that increases this to 5,555 kilometers. As yet, no larger or smaller variants are planned. The range is certainly a limitation of the C919. Both the 737 and A320 offer significant improvements. An extended range version of the C919 is planned, but this will still fall short. As they use the same engines, the differences come down more to design choices and fuel capacity. This may not be a limitation for many Chinese domestic routes, where Comac is targeting the product, but will be more of a concern for airlines wanting flexibility in operations and routing. It's hard to compare the aircraft on price as we usually would. Sales of the C919 to date have been to Chinese airlines and leasing companies, and details have been difficult to obtain. However, analysis by CNET quotes the price at around $50 million, which is about half the price of Boeing and Airbus equivalents. The C919 is still up to a year away from entering service, but has already sold well. According to Comac, as of September 2020, it has received 815 orders and options from 28 airlines. It's believed these are all Chinese airlines, with just one order from leasing company GE Capital for 10 aircraft with 10 further options. As with the ARJ21, the three largest airlines, Air China, China Eastern and China Southern, have made the same initial order for five aircraft each, with 15 more options. Other Chinese customers include Hainan Airlines, Sichuan Airlines, Joy Air, and Hebei Airlines. Many others will operate it via Chinese leasing companies. Most interestingly, in June 2011, Comac and Irish low-cost airline Ryanair signed an agreement to cooperate on the development of the C919. Ryanair's Michael O'Leary said at the time, Ryanair is pleased to sign this MOU with Comac and to work closely with them to develop a 200-seat C919 aircraft. We're pleased that there is now a real alternative to Boeing and Airbus, and we're seriously interested in the development of a 200-seat variant of the C919 aircraft, and we look forward to its introduction into commercial service from 2018 onwards. The Chinese C919 is not the only upcoming competitor to the 737 and A320. Russian manufacturer Irkut, with parent company United Aircraft Corporation UAC, is developing a similar specification narrowbody, the MC-21. Irkut has a long history of aircraft construction. The company was founded in 1932 and produced bombers during the Second World War. Since then, it's focused on transport and civilian aircraft. In 2006, it came together with other Russian aerospace companies, Ilyushin, Mikoyan, Sukhoi, Tupolev and Yakolev to form UAC. The design of the MC-21 began in 2006, but development has been delayed due to sanctions from the US. This has meant that some materials had to be resourced from Russia or China. The first aircraft flew in May 2017 and is currently in testing. Four aircraft built have been built for this purpose. There are two variants of the MC-21. The MC-21-300 has a range of up to 6,000 kilometers and a capacity of between 163 and 211 seats. This variant will launch first. Next is the MC-21-200, which is a shortened version having a range of up to 6,400 kilometers and a capacity of 132 to 165 passengers. There will be two options for engines. In 2009, Urquhart selected Pratt & Whitney PW1000G engines. These are also used on the Airbus A220 and Embraer E-Jets. In addition, Russian manufacturer United Engine Corporation has developed the Aviad Vigital PD-14 engine specifically for the MC-21. Like the C919, the MC-21 is designed to compete with the Boeing 737 and A320neo. The MC-21 compares well against both the 737 MAX and the A320neo. The higher capacity MC-21-300 matches the capacity of the A320neo and 737 MAX 8. The smaller variant's capacity is more in the range of the Comac C919 and the smaller 737 variants. 
However, it still falls short of the high-capacity variants that Boeing and Airbus offer, such as the 737 MAX 10 and A321neo. As for range, the MC-21 offers much more than the C919. It falls slightly short of the MAX and the A320neo, but would still allow transcontinental US flights if airlines were interested. But the real test will come with efficiency and performance. It's too early to tell for either the C919 or the MC21, especially with a newly developed engine option for the MC21. But some early analysis by research and markets shows that the MC21 may actually have superior seat mile economics to the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and Airbus A320neo. As of July 2018, there were 175 firm orders and options from 15 operators. The majority of the orders so far have been from Russian airlines. The largest order is from Aeroflot for 50-300 variant aircraft. There's a confirmed order from Azerbaijan Airlines for 10-300 aircraft. Letters of intent for possible future orders were signed by Peruvian Airlines and Merpati Nusantara Airlines of Indonesia. However, both airlines have since ceased operations. Following delays in development, UAC now plans delivery of the first aircraft in 2021 and another 12 in 2022. Production will then increase to 25 units a year by 2023 and then 72 units by 2025. Developing a wide-body aircraft is more complicated and more expensive. To develop a wide-body product, the two companies discussed above are joining forces. Comac and UAC established a joint venture in 2012 known as China-Russia Commercial Aircraft International Corporation, or CREIC. Comac has already been working on plans for a wide-body C929 aircraft, and this went forward with CREIC as the CR929. The original target for development was 2019, but this has been delayed and CREIC plans to start construction in 2021 and make the first aircraft delivery in 2025. This could be further delayed, though, with 2027 a more likely target. The initial version of the CR929 will have a three-cabin capacity of between 261 and 291, with a range of 12,000 kilometers or 7,460 miles. Capacity could be over 400 if a single cabin design is used. There are also two other variants planned later. One is a smaller variant which will have a typical three-cabin capacity of 250 with a range of 14,000 kilometers or 8,700 miles. A larger variant will have a typical three-cabin capacity of 320 with a range of 10,000 kilometers or 6,200 miles. A two-country collaboration, Russia is building the wings of the aircraft while China is building the fuselage. Some of the design, including the cockpit, will be shared with the narrow-body Comac C919. Engines will also be a joint project between the two countries. China's AVIC Commercial Aircraft Engines and Russia's United Engine Corporation, or UEC, announced in 2014 that they would work on a new engine design for the CR929. The decision to not use General Electric or Rolls-Royce engines has been a primary factor in delays to the development so far and it remains uncertain in late 2020. As a newly designed and efficient wide body, the CR929 will compete against the Boeing 787 and A350, but in specification, it's also very close to the A330neo. It's too early to have firm orders for the CR929. These are not expected until after flight testing begins. Like the Comac and Urquhart narrow-body aircraft, the initial orders will likely come from Chinese and Russian airlines and leasing companies. In fact, Oleg Bocharov, Russia's Deputy Minister of Industry and Trade, was on record saying, State-controlled Aeroflot, Russia's largest airline, along with China's state-owned carriers, could be the first CR929 customers. Despite the slow start, Krayik has strong ambitions for the CR929. It has set a goal of securing 10% of the market for wide-body aircraft, estimated to be some 9,100 wide-bodies over the next 20 years. So far, almost all sales of Comax aircraft have been to Chinese airlines, and likewise for the Urquhart MC-21 with Russian airlines. As a starting point for any manufacturer, China is far from a bad choice. It's the largest market globally for new aircraft and set to grow further. According to IATA, China was the second largest aviation market in 2019. Looking outside the manufacturer's countries, the most likely customers would be airlines in nearby Southeast Asia or Africa. 
China already has strong economic ties with many of these companies, and aircraft sales could build on this. Price could also be a big influencer. There is a high demand for second-hand aircraft in African and some South American markets, and a new lower-priced aircraft could be appealing. It's hard to tell what aviation will look like in 20 or 30 years. There was a time when Boeing was unaware of the competition that would emerge through Airbus. These developments from Russia and China are certainly the most likely option to shake up the status quo, but not in the immediate future. What do you think about China and Russia's plans to develop larger aircraft? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.